Wow. Oh, Here we are, just hanging out in front just of a hanging out in front of a bed. bed That's a hotel us. room. Is yeah. it my room? Is it your room? Is it our room? I don't know. But what we do know, it's yeah. my room. Yeah. And uh, what we do know is that we're in Glasgow for yeah. two. We're gonna get a real taste. Of, of Scottish football. Finally. And thanks to uh, BT Sport, uh, they are the exclusive home of the Europa League, the Champions League. Leave with the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> they're all big, aren't they? They're all big. And they're all exclusively live, of course. On BT Sport. On BT Sport. Uh, BT Sport. I actually use the app on a weekly basis. It's yeah, actually well. great. It is great. Like, the goal show is amazing the goal as well. The show is really good. I like to sort of hop about. And actually, right. I enjoy, I love in particular. And actually, BT don't want us to say this, but oh. uh, we're literally just saying it. We anyway. will. Is the uh, the enhanced player? Oh so yeah, good. The can just really good. catch yeah, up yeah, nice yeah, and quick. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, That's so true. Um, yeah, thank you to BT Sport because they're uh, allowing us to go to these two huge games: Celtic Park, uh, RB Leipzig. We're doing a match reaction on that. We've also got a little preview of the Liverpool game on Absolutely. your channel, uh, mm -hmm. so go check that out as well. And of course, the Rangers Liverpool game tomorrow, which Cut is down. huge. But yeah. I. One player that won't be playing in that game, it looks like. Well, two. Seems that way. Trent Alexander-Arnold, mm -hmm. uh, Luis Diaz. Mm -hmm. We don't need to talk about Luis Diaz because one, he's not English. Two, I'm just not about that. But, but you know the, the, the spotlight is always on the English players. And Trent um, right now, for sure. He's struggling. A little bit. Know? Yeah. Well, so this is what I wanted to talk about. Because I'm a Trent apologist, so... Um, no, okay, I understand yeah. that. You know him well, don't you? You've yeah. spoken to him a few times. At least twice. At least twice. Yeah. For longer than two minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Five. but the thing is, there is such a spotlight on him, mm. and unfortunately he plays it right back. And so for England, there's another whole conversation about that. Absolutely. You have Rhys James, you mm -hmm. have all these other players. So is he better? It then... There's this whole sort of um, motivation of why you're going to talk about a player because you might be a Chelsea fan, so you go with Rhys James, or you might have those kind of different biases. And then there's the layer of like, well, maybe you might just think that these two elite players, there might be one player that's a tiny bit better. Sure. And so then in this world that we create, uh, there are headlines which suggest that a player is useless all of a sudden framing is everything right framing. it's all about how you want to frame the conversation and what you can very often see what someone's motivations are from the way they frame the conversation some people i uh, i think want to try and defend trent and i think maybe i've gone too far down that route some sometimes and sometimes you can go the other way where it's about this you know like for instance i heard on one radio station today he's league one when he's <laughs> defending but he's champions league when he's but and you're just like these these really bland and boring and cliche characterizations of any player yeah. are lost and just completely useless at any point. What's worth acknowledging is there are deficiencies and weakness for Liverpool right now, right? Throughout this team. Yep. Because it's Klopp is so dependent on the system and therefore his players are so dependent on the system. But there's another side to it which goes down to the granular personal details out on the pitch for me that Trent isn't reaching the standards of and whether that's through motivation where people are going is he running back enough is he you know is he which i kind of actually always see. with the shoulders yeah what was he, the what's shoulders? he doing eh? yeah, um, yeah running back enough yeah, yeah yeah why are we salsa in but the but there's that, is that tony adams yeah, it? Is, yeah. <laughs> is that he's good on that yeah but he's not on bt sport I'm no thinking. yeah uh, but one of his friends yeah. but the point is it, uh, there's that but then there's also the fact that it's not about effort solely it seems also to be about actual execution on Trent's sure. part yeah yeah because that's that's what I wanted to get to because I think there's you have the media that goes one way or the other way and then you have supporters or or, or people that just kind of want him to do well that will maybe give him a free ride I got a, a tweet from someone because I, I initially for my reaction, I initially headlined it newspaper styly right. Trent calamity costs right, right. Wow. And then I thought, well, that's that's probably a little bit too much. And I saw this tweet from someone afterwards who messaged me saying, hang on, like, be careful, but this guy's 24. Right. He's just 24. You can't be saying things like that about someone. Why not? And I, well, well, that's it. Because I think when, when we're trying to get to the truth of this, there's cutting oh. someone too much slack there's fair criticism and there's writing someone off. Right. So, but there's, there's also somewhere, something else within that that I think um, maybe, I don't, I, I don't want to sound like some sort of cultural critique, but see, people seem to think that suffering or criticism in any way of any person is always bad. Yeah. Or unfair. Or mean? unfair yeah. or bad or just uh, in some way uh, negative and degrading the situation in some way. You know, but if you look at the story backwards with, say, a David Beckham or something like that, he talks about the time when they were, they were hanging effigies outside yeah, a place yeah, with yeah. him and they were do saying negative things. 
part of being a footballer is dealing with this ire, with the scrutiny of those kind of things, and with bad performances. Yep. It's just that what I find interesting about Liverpool at the moment is a lot of these players at Liverpool have not been through that period with Liverpool or with any team. So Trent hasn't, Virgil van Dijk arguably hasn't. Uh, you know, there are other big leaders within the team. There's Alisson, arguably. I don't think he deserves that much criticism. No. But what I mean by that is this is the first time that they've had to go through this period and we're, it's kind of uh, new waters for a lot of yeah. fans of this generation and this era. Well, the murkiest of waters that they've had murky. to deal with for the last five years. But, what's it, but what seems to... What annoys me a lot is uh, either one-dimensional evaluation or assumption of what Klopp's asked him to do as well. Because I think Klopp plays a role in this, right? Where with him, uh, part of me is seeing at the moment, he's almost going, we're playing this system and you'll suffer until you get the system right. Right. So every time that you're out of position, it's not on me, it's on you. Mm -hmm. You know where you maybe actually, maybe you, you don't know where you've got to be because it doesn't seem like you know. But the same happened with Gomez. The same happens with Matip. The same happens with Van Dijk. All three of those have been caught out of position at yeah, different yeah. points this season. But it's just that Trent is the first, li first line of attack or the first line of defence. So when you see him go past that, you go, well, it all originated there. Well, what about yeah. when he goes past Matip? What about when it, when Van Dijk is in the middle when he shouldn't be? What about when Jordan Henderson is pointing his arm down the field and going, you're meant to be there. It's like, <laughs> well, maybe you were meant to be in the position I was covering. Like, So it doesn't seem there's a great understanding of what they're actually being asked to do right now. Whereas in every other club system, it seems that way, apart from that one time when they also tried to transition formation and they played the high line and that just happened to coincide with when Liverpool all got injured. There, there are layers to this. That yeah. You're right. And I think that's it. I was sort of looking at the stats of him defensively. Defensively, he's never been that great, really. No, although he's had games where I think they've stood out to people and they've gone, he's defensively great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. And, and, and you know, he's not, he's not going to have, he's not going to be terrible every single time. I think the bottom line is, though, when I was looking into it, was that he is making more tackles mm -hmm. in his defensive third. And so... That speaks volumes to me in a few ways. One, one, um, the team overall is not doing very well. Agreed. But secondly, when it, when it comes to the team overall, is, is obviously the press isn't right. Mm -hmm. For a team that's been so structurally sound for so for so long, that's changing as well. But mm -hmm. also, the opposition, are fo they are focusing down that left-hand side because yeah. it is it is an area. And so when it comes to that that question of the truth about Trent, and I know I'm doing it as well, I think the truth is, is that he he doesn't have. He's not defensively minded first and foremost okay. because the the critique that I would have of him is I feel like he's a midfielder playing playing at right back, which is exactly what what he was. He was that midfielder first, and I think with that you have um, sometimes you're unable to read the space mm -hmm. as well as someone who had played right back time and time and time and time again and defended time and time and time again he's played it for long enough now though to know better than where he's at maybe but not in an exposed setting mm -hmm. if that makes sense he the, it's been front foot and actually even for that first goal Costa Shimakas doesn't get uh, any um critique at all but he they've all been programmed to be on the front foot mm -hmm. and so with that in mind it's not as there is elements of reading it but it's it's always like attack 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 even in defense and Shimakas for that first goal he made this really odd decision that, to go to go forwards instead of like deal with Saka. And that was the starting point of that first goal. And then for the second goal, Trent made a very unusual decision to go towards Hendo when Henderson was defending. Exactly, and which wide. is again, not reading the situation in our shape. It's attacking the situation because yeah, yeah. he's going, I'm going to go and read it. And it looks so kamikaze. It's such it is such a calamity defensively mm -hmm. in terms of that shape because they were OK. Yeah. Um, I think that's the I think that's the truth when it comes down to him, and I am. We've seen a lot of players in recent times move from one position to another, and the truth is there is a disparity between his defensive prowess and his attacking prowess, and maybe that needs to come structurally in terms of three at the back for me. I wonder if there's something in that. Someone said that to me in a live reaction. You think Kanate, uh, Matip. Van Dijk, Van Dijk would have that little bit more cover in, in the middle and Trent would obviously not have to worry about that and you can get the best out of him. So structurally, is the truth is, does Trent need to sort of change his role or does his role need to change at I, Liverpool? 
Because the 44 just exposes him more and more. So I floated, as everyone I actually floated this to a few years ago now, talking about Trent going into... Well, I, I remember decades ago, right? I was decades saying this. Trent yeah, you were saying it. it. But what I'm, what, what, um, that wasn't me claiming to have come up with the idea of a midfielder, um, though I did create the CDM. I think the point is, I was saying he could play there. The critique of that was he doesn't have the positional awareness, which... If, if you, by, by the way, if you're a midfielder, you're even more exposed than you are at right back very often. You know that. You're a central midfielder. You've captained yeah. XO out on the yeah. Wembley pitch as a central midfielder. Yeah. Your, your, your positional awareness needs to be so much more, not so much more, but so different yeah, to where he is. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, and a lot, of people, said, a lot of people said, I don't believe he has that positional awareness yet. He definitely has ability. Yeah. Uh, and then also, in where we think Liverpool want to go, does he fit into that? Does he have the attributes that complement and balance that midfield? Maybe not. Mm. So I think a lot of the criticism and the ideas that people have come up with, the, the three at the back thing, it was um, as far as I know, was originally uh, an Instagram idea where people were just playing around with formations. And obviously I'm in Liverpool's like churn right. for the Instagram. And I've been seeing that for a while. And, it, and I remember I was actually, I went for the shower to warm up when I first saw it. And I went, and I went, oh, Oh yeah, that's actually, that's not a bad idea. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought three at the back negates a lot of what Klopp is wanting to do and a lot yes. of what Pep Linders wants to do. So why compromise all of that for this? And the answer is, don't do that. Okay. Liverpool had, and I think in retrospect, had a really poor window in the summer in which I think they went for targets that were either out of their reach in Jude Bellingham. They knew Jude Bellingham wasn't coming this summer. Chiuamani, where they just seemed to completely lose their heads once he went to Real Madrid. We know for a fact that Chiuamani was interested in Liverpool. I uh, have a source that says he met with Liverpool and that would be around the FA Cup time, which was when Liverpool, Liverpool be in London. And then he went, right. and he went to Real Madrid. And every other, uh, there are other people that say Klopp vetoed certain moves and so did his assistant staff over the summer that Liverpool wanted to go for. And that Klopp and his assistants also made requests over the summer that weren't fulfilled. Right. So it led to quite a chaotic transfer window. And actually, we've taken the previous narrative of Liverpool being quite quiet, quite ordered. And actually, we've just gone, well, maybe that's just a continuation of that. I don't think that's true. And so I think that's impacted Trent a lot. Because in the midfield, whilst they might have numbers, which is the quantity Klopp spoke about, they don't have the quality mm. or the execution to protect Trent in the new system they want to play, which is not the same as the old system. And so what I'm saying by that is, is a really long way of saying, keep it right back in a form. Right, OK. Um, so, so give me in a, in a sentence, just to wrap this up, and let us know in the comments down below. Won't be one. <laughs> well, two at most. Um, what, is the, what is the truth? Half and half and what is the truth about Trent? The truth about Trent is, at the moment, he is demoralised and um, struggles with his own uh, public image, I think. And that is impacting his execution in the game. Interesting. I think that covers a lot. But, yeah, it yeah. does. That's mm. another video. Mm. That's a really good video. I look forward to hearing about that one. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a moment in time, but I think a lot of it's structural. As a, uh, and then from that the sort of cards start to fall. Right. And the form drops, the confidence drops. Klopp's talking about that himself. And that all, st you know, crumbles into a bit of a mess. Then. Do you know what it is about? Is is about if, if you don't execute... Well, no, I'm wrapping up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. But if, so, you, don't, if you don't execute, though, then, was, then it, it no, leaves... Well, the, well, I'm well, trying to execute. Well, if you don't execute, <laughs> then, it, then it leaves the space for someone to slip in and start, and it leaves that space for us to go, well, I actually think he's low on confidence right now. Or I don't think he's ever been that good. That, that never happened with the previous Liverpool teams. So there's clearly something wrong at Liverpool because the big dominant sides that Liverpool aspire to be, uh, cities, Bayerns, those things, you don't talk about that. I was trying to wrap up. Um, check out BT Sport, which, uh, which you have done because it's brilliant it for all your uh, exclusive needs when we're it comes agreed. to the European competitions. And uh, go check out Loz's video. We're about to record it right now and then we're hopping into bed. See you in a bit.